Hey everyone and welcome to this video. I'm Minx Laura, one, two, three, and happy Halloween! Okay, so I know it's not actually Halloween yet. I also know we're not even in the month of October yet, but hey, I love Halloween and uh, I love books. So I thought I would do a video in which I could show you some like spooky, scary, creepy books, kind of like Halloween book recommendations books that you can read in the month of october that will get you in the mood for halloween now i will be honest with you when it comes to creepy horrors and stuff i do read those types of books all year round like I don't just read them at halloween um, but i do make a kind of special you know effort to read a few more extra kind of spooky books in the month of october so maybe you'll get some ideas for books i have here i've selected some of them that i own that i have that kind of vibe so yeah these are my recommendations and uh hopefully you'll think oh that looks good i'd like to read that and yeah there we go so before i show you the books and there are a lot here by the way um i want to show you some halloween stuff that you know i've got here and of course that i'm wearing so first of all the wig um i love this wig it's so cool so it's black and orange and um if you can see the top there i've got this little headband i love this with like two little cute pumpkins on it's so adorable um but yeah i like this wig it's pretty cool um then my dress i've got a vampire themed dress on i got this on ebay i don't know why i keep doing this but anyway um yeah i got this on ebay i think last year and i just love it it really does fit not really nicely it's like a swing dress uh very flattering um and i just love like all the bats and the vampire like fangs and mouth and yeah it's just really cool i love it so that's that also I got this in Poundland the other day, so I thought I would show it off. I love this so much. It is a kind of cauldron-shaped mug, so witch's cauldron uh, in the shape of a mug. It's so cool. I had um, a cup of tea in it the other day, and it was, like, really cool. I was like, oh, anyway, uh, so that's that. And I have a hanging bat. <laughs> just, just really random, but anyway. Um, yeah, I got this in Poundland as well. So here's my, my hanging bat friend i honestly i love halloween like a little bit too much and uh, it's my favorite time of year i know most people's favorite time of year is probably like christmas but i'm like halloween um i just get really excited about it it's, it's just really good and i've loved halloween ever since i was a kid so you know um and the last thing i want to show you oh and the backdrop look my bit of uh material hanging up behind me so professional not um is yeah really cool like uh skulls with like red roses and stuff like that um yeah the last thing i want to show you is this t-shirt which uh i oh, know it's not t-shirt because it's got long sleeves i apologize um but yeah i got this on ebay originally it's from is it shein or sheen Sheen. anyway um but yeah i got it on ebay it is just the coolest top i've ever seen i will be honest it's a little bit kind of big but i can just wear it it's like oversized it's fine <laughs> um but yeah take a look at this like there's so much detail on it like it's just just so cool i love it so much um i took a picture of me wearing it the other day and put it on my social media and people were like oh my god where did you get that top um but yeah it's just so much going on like spookiness you got the ghost the witch's hat the candle just i love it so anyway enough about all that let me know if you also love halloween and do you dress up for halloween or do you not um i love dressing up every year i like to kind of dress up as something different um this year i'm going to be a witch i've already ordered and was well, turned up obviously my witch's costume it's really nice it's like black and like dark blue like a midnight blue and it's got lace on it and little moons and stars and stuff it's so cool and it fits woohoo it's always a good thing um so yeah it comes with a little hat and stuff i've just got to find my broomstick i do have a broomstick but i don't know where it is so if i can't find one i'll just nip to poundland or wherever and get a broomstick so yeah let me know if you dress up for halloween and like also like are you like me are you obsessed with halloween or do you just think yeah it's all right it's halloween <laughs> anyway so let's get started i have lots of books to show you and i've tried to kind of pick things um for everyone kind of thing so hopefully you'll find something that you'd be like oh i want to read that so the first one i want to show you is uh this one here now this book is just adorable it's called fangs and it's by sarah anderson and it's just really pretty. I love the cover of it. It's got black sprayed edges as well. And yeah, it's just fantastic. So it's basically like a little uh, collection of kind of comic strip. It's, it's kind of like a graphic novel 
comic strip, you know, and it's just really cute. It's about a vampire girl and a werewolf boy, and they fall in love, and it's just really funny. The like, honestly, the artwork is just absolutely fantastic. Obviously, there is a little story as you go along, and you'll find yourself just, you know, kind of smiling. I literally love this. I've read this a few times now. It doesn't take long to read, but it's just every time I read it, it just. <laughs> It just really makes me smile and feel happy. And of course, it's about a vampire and a werewolf, which is perfect for the theme of Halloween. Tell me what is your like favourite Halloween -y characters, like for vampires, witches, I know, zombies, whatever. I don't know. Let me know in the comments section. Okay, so the next book I want to show you is actually my current read. I literally started reading this yesterday, and after this video, I'm gonna carry on reading it because it is so good. I'm literally like loving this book. Um I'm on page 76 already and it is by Tiffany D. Jackson. I've read pretty much all of her books. I love her writing style. If you've not read her like, really quickly, check out her books. She's amazing. Um, so yeah, this one is just really good. It's, uh, it says on the front here, creepy, frightening. Um, that's a quote from R.L. Stein, by the way. Um, so yeah, this is basically about this girl and I haven't found out the full story of why she's moved from a like former town but obviously as I'm reading it will, will come out um, but they basically uh, her family have decided to move away um, there's, her stepdad has got a job kind of thing and with it comes along this like free house uh, and this house is just really beautiful but really old and kind of in need of a lot of you know attention and repair and it's as spooky as hell it's haunted and um, yeah it's quite a creepy kind of you know spooky haunted house vibe kind of thing but also there's there's other stuff that I know as I say is about this girl that I haven't found out yet it's really good I'm really enjoying it and uh, it's called white smoke and how gorgeous is this cover like it's just so beautiful I love the purple the girl is beautiful and if you look really closely there's like the creepy house is on the cover there can you see that oh, it's so creepy but yeah really really enjoying this so um yeah recommend that um, okay, the next one I read recently, and this is by Kendo Blake, and it's called All These Bodies. Now, um, as much as I like creepy horror books, I don't really like gore. Like, if there's lots of gore, it, it kind of, I don't like gore. I like creepy, I like scary, I like spooky and all that stuff, but I, I just don't like, like, you know, detailed gore. just freaks me out. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but anyway, without going on about that, uh, this is um, a YA thriller horror and I love the cover, by the way. It's like got this kind of mirrored look, which is pretty cool. Um, and it's, yeah, it's just a bit weird. Like, it says here, a gruesome killer, 16 bodies completely drained of blood, one impossible explanation. So, um, yeah, basically this girl who's like really young and kind of small and sweet kind of gets uh, accused of all these, well, no, she she admits to doing all these murders and yet yeah, the bodies are found drained of blood. And then there's this young guy and he's like, come on, look at you, you didn't do this. You did not take all these, you know, bodies and drain them. And who is it? And it kind of helps her and she says, okay, I'll tell you the truth, but only to you. Um, you know, it's, it's, I don't want to give any spoilers, but it has got a vampire-y, connection so if you're into your vampire stuff and you don't mind reading about lots of blood uh then hey this this could be for you <laughs> but yeah i've read so many other kendare blake books she's such a good author um she did the um what's it called series it's on the back here and i'm reading it and i still can't see what it's called what is it hold on oh that was it yeah three dark crown series so you've got three dark crowns one dark throne Two Dark Reigns and Five Dark Fates. Uh, so that's the series she's most famous for. Um, but she's done other horrors as well. She did Anna Dressed in Blood, which is actually another book that I really wanted to uh, say. I haven't got it, uh, unfortunately, because I'd got it out from the library ages ago. But I really recommend uh, Anna Dressed in Blood by Kendare Blake as well. I just realised why I'm not seeing things clearly. It's because I haven't got my glasses on. I'm thinking, why does everything look so... I haven't got my glasses on. Hold on. I don't know how it's going to look with the, <laughs> with the wig. Okay, uh, anyway, so that's that. Uh, then I wanted to show you this book here. Now, some of these I've read, some of these I haven't read. This one, actually, most of these I haven't read. These are on my TBR. Uh, this one is um, called Ghost Hunters, and it's by Neil Spring. So I've wanted to read this book for about three years. I've had it on my bookcase in my spare room for amount of time of like, it's just ridiculous. Why have I not picked it up? But I really plan on reading it this October. I literally, I really want to have this read um by the end of the, like october so um haunted house set in england terror scary it's uh it's set in um borley rectory which is a really kind of haunted 
a place here in England. I think they ended up like knocking it down and stuff, if I remember rightly. But it's uh, Harry Price, who was a very famous kind of like ghost hunter and stuff. Um, so yeah, like I love anything to do with like ghost hunting and stuff like that. So um, yeah, my name is Sarah Gray. I knew of Harry Price before I became his trusted assistant. He was notorious London's greatest ghost hunter. I just, yeah, I was literally holding the back of this book and reading it. I'm like, I want to read this now. Uh, oh, look, they've actually got, like, the Borley uh, Rectory original floor plans and stuff in here. This is so cool. So, yeah, I definitely want to read that. I will definitely read that in October. Uh, next up, I have this one here, which is by Stephanie Perkins. And uh, this is called The Woods Are Always Watching. And they are. Whenever you're in woods, they're always watching you. Um, so I love Stephanie Perkins' book. I know, um, what's it going to be called? Uh, it's being made into the uh, films coming on Netflix. Uh, what is it? Someone's in your house? Yeah, there's somebody, someone inside your house. Yeah. Um, I love that book. I thought it was fantastic. And yeah, it's going to be made into, I think it's already been made into a film. It's not going to be made. It's been made into a film. And it's going to be on Netflix and stuff. So I'll definitely watch that. Um so yeah this is like really creepy it's about two best friends um nina and josie spent high school as outsiders but at least they had each other uh do, 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 do. i'm just i'm not going to give like full blurbs about the books i'm just going to kind of give you a little bit of information otherwise i'll be here for like hours <laughs> so they go on a kind of all right a three-day hike deep in the woods a detour off trail leads them straight into a waking nightmare and then into something far worse something that will test them in horrifying ways oh no it's not gonna be good is it in the woods the only thing i'm really sad about with this book um is that the font size is freaking tiny i don't know how i'm gonna cope with this but if i show you um you can't really see on the camera but honestly i mean i know i wear glasses my eyes aren't great so i have to wear glasses when i read and stuff and look at the screen um but seriously this font is tiny for me so i can read it but sometimes if i have books like this that are like really small font it kind of strains my eyes and stuff so i'm gonna have to see how i get on with this one um because as much as i love reading stories and stuff you know it, my eyes are more important i don't want to get like headaches and eye strain um, but we'll see it's only a quick read so if i did really like it hopefully it wouldn't take me that long to get through but yeah we'll see and the wood's always watching. <laughs> All right, next up, I got uh, this in a local charity shop. It's Classic Tales of Vampires and Shapeshifters. This is a freaking cool cover. I mean, come on. you got to be honest. This is just amazing. Um, I love it. I love everything about it. So, yeah, it's just a collection of, like, um, you know, spooky stories about vampires, shapeshifters. Um, just looking at some of the titles of the stories here the death of lucy the horror from the mound a uh, tragedy of the forest the gray wolf the mark of the beast uh, dracula's guest the room in the tower um fatal women oh okay the vampire maid okay um so yeah this is just fun like, i don't think it's like an adult i think it's more like ya by the looks of things there's lots of like cool um artwork in here as well so i just thought it'd be fun um random fact if you're a regular viewer you'll know this anyway but when i was younger um in my teenage years i actually <laughs> i actually thought i was a vampire uh yeah i've done a whole video about this like i'm serious like i was dating this guy who was a goth and uh he kind of said that he was a vampire and he said if he bit my neck he would turn me into a vampire and i was like okay cool i've always wanted to be one yeah that's weird but anyway so i've always been fascinated by vampires and um that's that <laughs> i just thought i'd share that information with you have you ever thought you're a vampire i have got a few other vampire books here as well actually i'll show you those um i've got vampires never get old which is another kind of one of those collections of short stories um and this one here is also one of these like anthologies so you've got the collection of vampire romance this is called the mammoth book of vampire romance and my lovely fiance nathan actually got this for me years ago i've never read it i've got so many books that i've like just had like for so many years i do want to read them but i just don't get around to them because i buy new ones <laughs> or go to the library but i will read all these um at some point but yeah this is cool so i mean the, the good things with these kind of short story books like you can just read a few you don't have to read all of them you can if you want to but and also i find with short stories like anthologies and stuff like sometimes i like really hate one story but then 
flip reverse it and I'll really love another story kind of thing. So um, it's never kind of any in between. I either really love a story or it's like, meh, it's all right. Um, don't like it. But yeah, there's some really great authors in this one, um, including obviously the wonderful V.E. Schwab, who I adore, Victoria Schwab, uh, Julie Murphy, Danelle Clayton, etc. So yeah, it says here, um, vampires never get old, towels with fresh bite. <laughs> so that's that one um and as i say this is all like vampire romance which is pretty cool vampires are quite like ooh la la do you know what i mean um over 25 short stories of hot blood midnight pleasures and inhuman passions oh my oh my <laughs> i have to have a cold shower after reading that one Anyway, um, okay, so I want to show you next up a book that um, was very kindly sent to me from the publishers, and I'm very, very excited to read this. This is definitely, 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 definitely going to be in my October uh, reading sessions that I have. Um, I've saved it, actually, I've saved it for um, Halloween because I, I wanted to read it, like, because it just it sounds so scary and so spooky. I was like, I'm having this book for halloween without a doubt so i've kept it till kind of then um so it's called the whistling which i can't really do very well but i'm going to try it okay that's yeah it's not bad it's not bad um and it is by um rebecca netley by the way this black and gold on this book is just gorgeous this is the proof copy by the way so i don't know what the real actual copy is going to end up looking like um but like either way it's really cool i love the black and gold and it's so shiny look how shiny that is it's so shiny um so yeah i've got the press release here so um this halloween don't be afraid be terrified that is a fantastic i love that i think that's so good like i think that's really good um and hopefully it will terrify me so yeah rebecca netley um do, do, do. Right, okay, so I'm going to read this to you because I was sent this, so I will read this whole thing. Uh, a spine chilling ghost story with a thrilling mystery at its heart, set on a wild island off the coast of Scotland. Alone in the world, Elizabeth takes the position of nanny to a family on the remote Scottish Isle of, I think that's Skelth, Skelthsea. Skelthsea, I think that's Skelthsea. Um, her charge is a strange child, distracted and secretive. Mary hasn't uttered a word since the sudden death of her twin, William, just days after their former nanny disappeared. Elizabeth's questions are met with silence. No one will speak of William. Just as no one can explain the lullabies sung in empty corridors or the whistling. <laughs> so <laughs> that comes in the night. With winter closing in, passage off the island turns treacherous and Elizabeth finds herself trapped but is this house haunted by the ghosts of the pasts or the secrets of the living? Oh my God, that sounds so good. Seriously, I'm, I'm really mega excited for this. As soon as I got the proof copy, I wanted to read it like that day, but I thought it sounds so good and it's like Halloween creepy. I, I, you know, so I've saved it for October. Now it's nearly October, so I'm, I'm mega excited. Um, so yeah, thank you to the publishers and especially to the lovely Rebecca, uh, Rebecca Netley, the author for, you know, getting this organized for me to get and I will read it. And I'll tell you what it's about. And I'm really excited about it. So, yeah, it comes out if you want to purchase it. It says here, published on the uh, 14th of October. So that is the Whistling. Go check it out. I love that. The whole kind of, like, creepy, like, you know, especially the bit where it said um, the lullabies. Yeah, the, 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 the lullaby is sung in an empty corridor. That's always, like, really freaky when you hear sounds or whatever. And there's no one there, especially in corridors. I don't know why, but it's just even more creepy. So, yeah, really, really looking forward to reading that one. All right. So next up, I have this one here, which I got a very special signed copy from the author uh, from Waterstones Exclusive. And this is by Tanya Byrne. And it's called After Love. Um, another book that I've been waiting. A lot of these actually you're going to see I've got, but I've waited until kind of Halloween -y time. So I get in the mood for spooky stuff. And it's called After Love. So it says, not even death will tear them apart. This cover is just intense, right? I mean, this is beautiful cover. And as I say, it's signed. Let's have a look. There we go. It's a little uh, nameplate there where she signed it. Wow, this is really pretty, really pretty. Um, I've heard mixed things about this. I'm not going to lie. Some of the booktubers that I've watched have been like, oh my God, this is amazing. Others have been like, eh, it wasn't all that. 
I'm just going to go into it with an open mind. I, you know, look, I do listen to people's reviews to a degree, but at the same point, I kind of go in with my own, like, you know, open mind and make my own decisions kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm really hyper for this one. It does, I think it sounds really, really good. Uh, it's got an LGBTQI theme as well, which is, you know, fantastic. A bit of rep there. Uh, it says car headlights. The last thing Ash hears is the snap of breaking glass as the windscreen hits her and shatters into a million pieces like stars. But she made it. She's still there. Or is she? Is she? Uh, this New Year's Eve, Ash gets an invitation from the afterlife that she can't decline to join a clan of fierce girl reapers who take the souls of the city's dead to await their fate. But Ash can't forget her first love, Poppy, and she will do anything to see her again, even if it means they only get a few more days together, dead or alive. Like, come on, that just gives me, like, ooh, tingles. Like, I love it. I just think it sounds really, really good. Um, so that is that one. Okay, now this one here I found in a charity shop. By the way, I go like in charity shops all the time and I love looking at like old books and stuff. You know, it doesn't matter if they're not in the best of conditions. Like, look at this. Like, it's all a bit battered and kind of, you know, it's bleh. But who cares? Like, it's readable. It's, and it kind of gives it a little bit of like extra personality when they're so old. Like, maybe I'm a bit weird and stuff here, but like, I think, where's this book been? Who had this book? Who's read this book? You know, what? What kind of history has this book had? Okay, maybe I'm just a freak. I don't know. But anyway, so this is Point of Horror. And um, when I was younger, I used to love like Point of Horror, Goosebumps, all that kind of stuff. Um, I used to love this show. Let me know in the comments if you remember it called Are You Afraid of the Dark? It was fantastic. It was on Nickelodeon and they, like, I don't know, I think it was about five or six youngsters and they'd sit around a campfire and each like episode, a different member of the, the group would tell a story and it was like uh, submitted to the approval of the Midnight Society, and then this big campfire would, anyway, I love that show, so, you know, even when I was really young, I was into kind of scary shows, scary books and things, um, so this one's called The Invitation, and it's by Diane Ho, and, um, yeah, it says, a party like no other, <laughs> this sounds so cool, I mean, this isn't going to take me long to read, it's only a little one, um, so it says, it arrives on crisp, ivory paper printed in elegant gold writing an invitation to the social event of the year Cass Rockham's annual autumn party but why has Cass invited Sarah and her four friends they aren't rich or popular like the rest of Cass's crowd is there some darker meaning is there some darker meaning behind the invitation soon Sarah discovers that she and her friends are in terrible danger they haven't been invited to a party they have been invited da, da, da. To die. Did you like that little bit of suspense there? I think that sounds really fun. I, I love it. I love like those kind of books. All right. Um, which, oh, actually, I've got um a Fear Street book. Oh, sorry. I've got a Fear Street book here. Uh, this is another one that I'd, I'd bought a few weeks ago, but I wanted to keep it for Halloween-y time. Uh, this is R.L. Stein, Fear Street, The Beginning. This is, um I think there's three stories in here, if I remember rightly. I love the cover by the way sorry I, I, I quickly rushed but I really want you to see this cover because it's gorgeous like everything going on like the creepy trees there's the skull in the trees this girl is just like standing there like, I, I don't know I just think it's just, oh gorgeous cover all right so you get three uh, short stories in here you get the beginning no sorry you get the new girl the surprise party the overnight missing I don't know eh? and I get four okay let me start that again. Hi, this is... <laughs> you get four stories. You get the new girl's surprise party, the overnight and the missing. There we go. Um, and yeah, I just, as I say, I love these kind of collections of stories and stuff. And um, I still haven't watched the Netflix film of Fear Street, which I want to do. I always say that, but I will do. I will get around to it eventually. Um, but yeah, that's cool. Okay, uh, next up, I've got these two books here. These are from Waterstones and I can't remember in what order they are. I'm so sorry. I think it's... I think it's this one first. Actually, it matches my wig, look. Orange. Um, so yeah, this is, oh, they're both by Phil Hicks. Gorgeous little covers, look at these. I don't like that scarecrow though. Scarecrows freak me out. 
ever since jeepers creepers the have you seen jeepers creepers oh my god that scarecrow i just i don't i can't go there it's horrible um but yeah these are the haunting of aveline jones and the bewitching of aveline jones i can't remember in what order they are i think that's the first one this is the second one so these are like middle grade but i just i love the covers i think i saw these on books and bargains channel i'm sure charlotte showed one of them and i was like oh that looks good and then ordered the second one as well um so Aveline loves reading ghost stories. So a dreary half term becomes much more exciting than she discovers when she discovers a spooky old book. Uh, not only are the stories spine tingling, but it belonged to a girl called Primrose Penberthy, uh, who vanished mysteriously, never to be seen again. Intrigued, Aveline decides to investigate Primrose's disappearance with some help from her new friend Harold. Now someone or something is stirring and is looking for Aveline so yeah i just thought they sounded really good they're only little quick reads they're not going to take long um but yeah i just i love the covers i think the artwork is just divine um all right so i picked this one up from a charity shop as well um this is uh, victorian horror stories the osborne uh, library of fear fantasy and adventure um <laughs> like i don't know i think i'm gonna give this to nathan as a gift because i don't know if i'm gonna read this or not but i thought it looked pretty cool like it was only like a pound or whatever and it went to a charity um but yeah i don't know <laughs> all my days look at this hand like a like a half human and then you've got the werewolf mind you nice nails the nails are the nails are nice they're better than mine at the moment i mean come on um but yeah, they're just little fun stories. Well, not fun, because they're dark and scary. But you know what I mean? Just little stories. Um, what have we got here? The Loose. No, Let Loose. The Cat. The Beast from Nowhere. An Original Revenge. One Silver Bullet. Oh, my. <laughs> um, and there is some cool artwork as well. So, oh, God, look at this cat. It's a creepy cat. Ooh. I don't like cats. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to put it out there. I know you'll be like, oh, I hate you, Laura. No let me get this no let me say that again i don't i don't not like cats cats just don't like me um <laughs> i'm more of a dog you know you're either a cat, cat or a dog person right let's be honest i'm more of a dog person um every time i try and be friendly to a cat they either hiss at me they scratch they look the other way like i don't know so it's kind of put me off a of liking cats i can look at a picture of a cat and be like oh it's so cute or i can see a cat in the street and be like ah oh. but as soon as i go near them they just they don't like me so why should i like them so i prefer dogs <laughs> anyway uh so moving on um this one i got out from my local library i wasn't meant to get any more library books out because i've already got so many books to read but how could i resist this seriously uh this is called hex life and uh wicked it says wicked new tales of witchery now i don't know when this was from i don't think it's that old i think it's like a couple of years maybe um but yeah there's some really really good authors in here including rachel kane who i love her book so much uh bless her um who we've got here kelly armstrong theodora goss Sherilyn kenyon and many others but yeah they're all kind of stories with a witchy vibe i love anything to do with witches um and you know what i'm gonna say now but i i am a witch as well <laughs> so when i was younger i thought i was a vampire i also thought i was a witch but do not worry do not fear i'm I'm a good witch i'm a nice witch i'm not one of those dark horrible evil witches or am i no i'm not i'm not but um yeah like i, I love reading witchy stuff um these witches might be monstrous or they might be heroes depending on their own definitions even the kind hostess with the candy cottage thought of herself as the hero of her own story after all a woman's got to eat <laughs> i love that um these are tales of witches wickedness evil and cunning love it so yeah I, I got this from my local library and i was yeah i was like yeah look at that it's really cool and it'll go really well with my my cauldron mug so there we go actually i'm seeing that instagram picture now um on instagram by the way come and follow me uh at minx laura123 on instagram but yeah i am um, i always do lots of like hashtag bookstagram hashtag bookworm hashtag reading uh book pictures and i've already got that in mind now of, of that book hex life with the cauldron huh you see i'm already planning ahead of my instagram pics okay and more witchy stuff here um this is uh the once and future witches by alex e harrow um this book i got ages ago and i'll be honest with you the reason why i've still not read it um isn't because i don't want to because i really do um i love the cover as well it's gorgeous it's because it's quite chunky it's big 
Um, and I know I can't say anything about being chunky because come on, I'm a chubby chubster. But <laughs> but with books like that are big, they scare me. Big books scare me. I can't help it because they take so long to read and I've got so many other books. Anyway, but I will get around to this book eventually because it just sounds fantastic. Um, and yeah, it's all about witches and stuff. There's... Um, the, da, 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 da. the Once and Future Witches is a powerful moving tale of sisterhood and suffrage in New Salem. Anything with Salem, I'm is so interested. I've, I've read so many books and watched so many documentaries and stuff on Salem. Um, I love people on YouTube when they do like tours, like them going around Salem and stuff. I really enjoy that sort of thing as well. Um, I'd love to go to Salem. It looks so freaking cool there. Um, there's no such thing as witches, but there will be. So, yeah, I just, this one's based in 1893 as well. So, it says here, I'm terrified, I'm terrible, I'm fearful, and I'm something to be feared. Oh, sounds so good. I can't remember what's under here. Oh, okay, it's just plain. You know, you, sometimes, no, sometimes you take the dust jacket off and it's like this really amazing artwork, but sometimes it's plain and you're like, okay. But anyway, so yeah, that is that one. If you're into your witchy, witchy poos book um all right talking to salem actually i've got this book here so i don't really tend to read much fiction uh i'm sorry factual i'm <laughs> get that wrong i tend to read more uh fiction i don't really read like factual books kind of thing like non-fiction isn't really my thing i like reading fiction because it's it's just kind of that escapism from reality you know you get into a story and you're not thinking of real life kind of thing but now and again i do like reading fiction uh get mixed up sorry <laughs> now and again i do like reading factual because it is well factual and you learn stuff you know it's interesting especially with like paranormal stuff i like reading um you know real stuff because it's real you know like it's all well and good reading spooky stories that have been wrote by a lovely amazing author but sometimes you want true accounts you want true scary stuff um so one of my viewers sent me this a good few years ago and it's called the ghosts of salem uh, haunts of the witch city and yeah it's like haunted america loving the cover it's really creepy but yeah, so sometimes I, I wouldn't sit and read this all in one hit, but like I would just read a few pages here and there um, just to kind of learn some. There's all different like uh, things in here. There's lots of real photographs as well. Uh, Joshua Ward House, the uh, Armory Memorial Park. It just, yeah, it looks so creepy. <laughs> but yeah, something like this, you know, if you're not into reading like spooky stories that are made up, then maybe try, uh, you know, actual factual books about paranormal and places that are haunted or you know like ghost hunting in general like yeah that's it's an idea if you don't like reading fiction all right next up um i got these two from charity shops this one is called hex and i've heard a lot of things about this this has been out for quite a while i've never read it um i had it on my bookcase for a little while so uh i thought i'd give it a go this october let's hope i get around to all these because there's a lot of books here um, but yeah thomas oldie Huvelt. i think that's how you say his name if not it is now uh yeah it's called hex and this literally it does sound really brilliant so it says welcome to black spring a picturesque picturesque town with an ugly secret the 17th century woman with sewn shut eyes that just sounds really messed up a mouth oh my god so she's got her eyes sewn up and a mouth oh geez um walks its streets enters its homes watches it watches its people when they sleep <laughs> this sounds terrifying um they call her the black rock witch so accustomed to her presence the townsfolk often forget what will happen if her eyes ever open so for to protect themselves the black spring elders use high-tech surveillance to quarantine the town Frustrated with the lockdown, the town's teenagers decide to... Oh, no. Oh, no, this isn't going to go well, is it? Um, the town's teenagers decide to break the rules and go viral with the haunting. But no one foresees the dark, dark nightmare that awaits them all. Oh, it's not a good idea, is it? I mean, there's a lockdown for a reason and they're just going to go out and it's, bad stuff's going to happen. And I can't wait to find out what it is. <laughs> all right, and the other one, yeah, is The People Next Door. Uh, by Christopher Ransom. This one has been out for years. I think it's, I don't know. Let's have a look. I think it's like 2014 or 15 or something. Uh, okay, it's older. 2011. There we go. Um, so, yeah, I mean, this just, it just looked creepy. I don't really know much about it. I don't know if it's going to be vampires, possibly. Uh, you know, the people next door, could there be vampires? Am I completely barking up the wrong street? I don't know. Um, it says here, perfect family, an evil secret, a shocking twist ending, 
the people next door and it says it's the most terrifying unforgettable unforgettable <laughs> novel that you'll read all year oh god okay so yeah there's obviously this new family moved in and they're a bit creepy or so i don't know i don't know if this is gonna have like a vampire thing with it as i say or maybe they're like i don't know serial killers or i don't know we'll find out apparently there's a big old twist at the end which is exciting so that is that one um oh i've got another witchy one here this is the sequel to uh these witches don't burn which i read absolutely ages ago so i'll be honest with you i can't really remember anything about it well a tiny little bit um but yeah this is the sequel to it so it's by isabel sterling this cover is gorgeous got real look at this real halloween witchy vibes going on here um yeah it's called this coven won't break so this is the sequel i can't remember what happened in the last one it looks like i'll have to go online when i do eventually read it and like you know do a recap of what happened in the first book but yeah it's a YA it's cute bunch of girls like witches in their coven and friends and yeah so that's that and the last book I want to show you this is really embarrassing because like, I'm 42 years of age but there we go um I found this in a charity shop <laughs> I, just, I was like oh wow that looks really cool and then I thought oh I'm an adult oh well it doesn't matter whenever I ever cared about things like that right um yeah so this is the extraordinary files vampire kiss i mean it literally looks like it's for seven or eight year olds but i don't care um <laughs> and yeah it's, it says here a series of night attacks a strange graveyard agents turnbull and parker are used as bait to uncover a deadly modern day dracula this this is just fun right i mean th this is creepy this is fun it doesn't matter if it's for kids and i'm not a kid oh there's a little quiz at the back as well this is good oh how do you kill a vampire oh i know the answers to that um should i tell you should i ruin the answer okay so put a wooden stake straight through the heart <sighs> oh i thought you could also like chop off the head and anyway <laughs> so yeah vampire kiss it's not going to be like a cult classic but it'll be a little fun read i'll probably take like 10 minutes to read um, i'm going to take my glasses off now so i'll probably have a big old red mark on my nose yep that's coming up already um what do you think of this wig though do you like it anyway um so hopefully you've enjoyed this video i've made you smile give you that kind of spooky vibe uh, for halloween and also you know look give you some book recommendations because there are so many amazing books out there and you know i've shown you some of them what's that a loud bang outside um but obviously yeah just go into your library or local bookstores or online and look up the horror section or you know creepy kind of books i don't know um but yeah there's there's so much you could read at halloween and all year round if you like that you know kind of genre um i also really recommend books i'm trying to think i've all i pre-ordered but it doesn't come out yet um it's a collection of ghost stories from oh i can't remember the author i'm so sorry i should have checked on it before it but it comes out soon ah uh, it's the woman who done the binding i can't remember anyway so i've got that coming out from waterstones as well that's on pre-order but other ones um my best friend's exorcism grady hendrix that was really good and addressing blood as i said before ken Dead blake that was really really good i love that so much um Oh, I don't know if you want to like if you want to go through my goodreads I read a lot of horror and stuff so um follow me on goodreads down below I'll put the link you go on my read list you can see what books I've read and want to read etc so if you go just scroll through there you might find some other horror themed books that you might like the look of um just try to think really random I mean obviously you've got all the the classics you know but uh yeah let me know what books you've decided to read uh for Halloween you know for the month of october tell me your favorite horror books you know um let's say your favorite kind of creepy characters um and yeah thank you so much for watching and i hope you've enjoyed the video please give it a big thumbs up leave a comment share subscribe to my channel and smash the notification bell to all and also don't forget to check out minx laura 123 asmr which is my other channel i put the link down there on that channel i make videos to help people with anxiety and insomnia kind of relaxation videos so yeah go and check out my other channel i really want to take this wig off now because my head's starting to itch a little um but i know it's gonna look stupid because as soon as i take it off my hair's gonna be like <coughs> weird should i do it should i do it no i don't, don't want to do it i'll wait till the video is stopped and then i'll take it off um so anyway thank you for watching and have yourself a fantastic spooky 
Halloween and happy reading. Mwah. Bye.